Hello everybody and welcome to another Python 3 Basics video. At this point, uh, you've got all the basics necessary to start employing modules. We do still have a few basics like classes and some other stuff, but now would be a good time I think to talk about modules. If you are using Linux, installing Python modules is incredibly stupid easy. So for programming, a lot of times Linux is way easier than Windows, uh, but Windows is still better I think for um, user friendliness I suppose and other other applications but that's not what this video is about uh, when it comes to installing programming in Python module modules and all of this Linux is super easy and I believe Mac users also have the same is basically the same thing as Linux not basically but as far as adding uh, modules is concerned um, so I think they have their own little bash line and everything but I'm not sure I've never owned a Mac and never used a Mac so um, so yeah Mainly with Windows, the problem is there's like there's a, a quite a few methods for installation of modules, and nowadays there's really only one main method. But if you are looking around online, you're going to find everybody's you know method, and you've got you know pip install, set up tools, download, click and drag, or set up the pi. So at the time of starting Python, a large part of my troubles was that I actually couldn't like get a module. <laughs> right, I didn't understand like how do you do this. Uh, so it was obviously very frustrating. So first off, Python uh, is going to look in a few places for modules, and those main two places it's going to look is in site packages. So uh, if you're on Windows, that's going to be c colon slash slash you know, python 3.3 or python 3.4 uh, slash, and then it's like capital L-I-B, and then site packages, I think so that's the directory. Um, so it's going to look there. It's also going to look in the directory of your script. So wherever your script is in that directory, you can put stuff. So say you're, you know, uh, coming from programming in Java, and everybody in Java likes, you know, each part of your program has its own little file, and at the end you bring them all together. And so if you like to do that, uh, you can do that in Python very simply, and you just leave each script in the directory, and you can import them uh, in the main scripts if you want it. So that's kind of how you can do it. And I think once you familiar, familiarize yourself uh, with the structure of how to use modules and all of this, um, and just understand how things work, it'll help you a lot, certainly in the future. Uh, so enough on that, though. Uh, let's actually install some stuff. So I'm going to start with uh, Linux first, just because it's super easy. <laughs> so with Linux, you're generally going to see uh, uh, the following. It's going to be super user do, and I'm going to use apt-get. Uh, you can also, if, you're, if you use yum or, or whatever, um, I'm gonna use app get and then we're gonna install and then usually what you're gonna have is Python dash whatever the module name is so in this case let's go ahead and install matplotlib and that should be it you hit enter and it will start uh, building dependencies and all that and in a moment it'll ask you if you want to actually install it how much space it's gonna take and all of that here it's gonna take 21 megabytes that's okay Y for yes enter and we're on our way installing matplotlib um, and that's it uh, with Linux, so it's obviously very simple. I'm not going to sit here and wait until it's all done, so I'm just going to move it aside for now. And we're going to start with installing things on Windows. So here we are with Windows. If you go on to, um, for example, we are on www.pyqtgraph.org here. And as we can see, here's the downloads here. Um, they actually give us not only the source, they give us, uh, if you're on Debian and Ubuntu, uh, you can download there, and they even give us Windows installers. Um, but most people uh, I found do not give you a Windows installer, um, and they certainly don't give you 32 versus 64 bit, so that can be annoying. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, for the most part, everyone's going to have a tar.gz, otherwise referred to as a tarball. So uh, to download it, obviously we'll click it. That begins our uh, download. It's already done. Uh, let's show in folder here. So here's our download here. So once you've downloaded the tarball of whatever it is that you are trying to install, you're going to need to somehow decompress it. If you're on Windows, a uh, good free decompressor is 7-Zip. I like 7-Zip. You can also use WinZip if you have it and you've uh, got that working for you. Anyway, 7-Zip, we're just going to extract here. And when you do that, you'll have a dist folder, a distributed folder. Go ahead and click on that, and you've got another tar file. Once again, 7-Zip. Extract here, fine, no problem. And here you've got pyqtgraph dash in the file version. And within that, you have a setup file. Now you can't just click setup, that's not going to work out for you. What you're going to need to do is uh, install it. So, and here's a little trick that uh, one of my uh, viewers actually told me is you can hold down shift 
right click of the folder and you come down here and you can open it in a process. I, I don't think that's what I want. I want to open it in command, I think. Um, let's try process, see if that works. No, nope, that's not what we wanted. Maybe I'm just missing it or something. There we go, command window. Okay, so <laughs> open in command window here. Uh, and basically that's just going to take you to the location. So you don't actually have to type it all out. So once you're there, um, I mean, I've been using Linux too much. I can't even tell you what we can do to get... Anyway, we're in this file. <laughs> and setup.py is what we want. So to call setup.py, uh, you just have to do setup.py install. Now if you've come in from any of my other videos, uh, usually what I would type is python setup.py install. But if you want to use Python, um, you're going to have to have Python added to your path. And generally, you probably already do, but if you didn't, it would give you problems. Um, but actually, I was just reading the documents, and you don't have to say Python setup.py install. You just have to say setup.py install. So you hit enter, and that will install the package for you. Now, Python Qt uh, graph or PyQt graph won't actually work unless you have SciPy and some other dependency installed. Uh, but I just want to show you guys an example of the installation process. Um, now, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is, again, on pyqtgraph.org, they came with a fancy Windows installer. Uh, nice. But a lot of modules will not do this for you. Uh, also, they might not work. Like, they might only have a 32-bit installer, but not a 64. And you've got to, you know, build your own. Um, so obviously, that's pretty problematic for a lot of people. And, but luckily, there is a website that has some great Windows install installers. Uh, for things that typically don't have installers or, again, don't come in like 64-bit, for example. Uh, and that website is this website here. If I recall, I'll put it in the uh, description. Otherwise, if I forget, someone will remind me and I'll, I'll make sure it gets in the description. Anyway, it's just got a whole bunch of modules here. Uh, so you can actually download them. And as you can see, they come in for Python 2.6 all the way up to 3.4 and they come in both 64-bit and 32-bit, so it's a huge help, this website. Um, and it just takes a lot of the hassle out of downloading, and then if you have to uh, rebuild, um, you won't have to here. So anyways, hopefully that helps some of you guys out. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.